Number 37. Suggest four ways in which the concentration of pH 3 could be increased in an equilibrium described by the following equation. And then they give us the equation over here with its delta H value. So the first thing that I do, especially if we're talking about Le Chatelier's and they give me a delta H value, the first thing is I'm going to rewrite this equation just so that I could work with it a little bit better. So we got P4 gas plus 6H2 gas, which comes to equilibrium with 4 pH3 gas, then automatically address this delta H situation. Basically, the only thing that you need to know is whether this is endothermic or exothermic. Since this delta H is a positive value, that is an endothermic reaction. This was when we talked about delta H is in a, in a previous chapter that we did. So it's all coming back, guys. So delta H positive endothermic, that means that you're absorbing the heat. And to show that on a balanced equation, the heat is going to be on the reactant side. If you had a negative value in front of the delta H, that's exothermic, releasing heat, and it goes with the products. So that's the difference there. Now we're ready to address the problem. So. They said we need four ways in which the concentration of pH 3 would be increased. So I'm just going to write a little note for myself. I want this pH 3 to increase. So I just put like a little arrow up here. I want this side to increase. So now I'm going to put a general arrow. Which one of these are we going to be doing? Do we want to go the forward reaction or do we want to go the reverse reaction? Keep in mind, we want to produce more pH 3. So we would go the forward reaction, right? In the direction that you go, you will produce more of these. So we are doing the forward reaction. So I'm just going to say forward RxN. Now here comes Le Chatelier's principle. We're going to run through these. We're going to do a couple of them because we only need four ways. So we just need to find a couple of them in which we will get a forward reaction. So let's start with concentrations. Now, Le Chatelier's principle is basically like a, a give and, and take, right? You always have to go back to what you started with. So if you increase an amount, doesn't matter whether it's on the reactant side or on the product side, if you increase an amount of something, you have way too much. You increased it more than you should have. So to counteract that, you want to get rid of it. So you will shift in the opposite direction or the opposite side. So let's just give a little example. Let's pretend that we increased the pH 4, or actually not the pH 4, just the P4. If we increased this, that means I have way too much of this and I need to go towards the opposite side. That means that your arrow will go towards the opposite side. And look, do the arrows match? Yeah. So we just found one way. So I can increase the concentration of P4. And by increasing the concentration, I got way too much. I will go to the opposite side. It's the same arrow as what I wanted. Okay. So let's maybe do the other reactant. What happens if we increase H2? Well, that means I have way too much. I will go to the opposite side. So since this is a reactant, I will go towards the opposite side, aka the product side. And look, that's the same arrow. So we did it again. So I can increase my P4. I can increase the concentration of H2. Done. Two out of four ways done. Let's maybe move on to temperature because they gave us a heat value here. So now here's the idea with heat, guys. That's why it's really important to just say where your heat is on what side, because it makes it so much easier. If you increase the temperature of your reaction, right, that means that it's way too hot, right? You increase the temperature from the normal temperature, whatever that is, but it's way too hot. So like on a really, really, really hot day, me personally, I don't want to be outside. I like being inside. So 
I go away from the heat. I don't want to be in those hot temps. So I shift away from the heat. So now let's think about it. If the heat is over here, and if I increase the temperature, am I going to go um, toward the heat or away from the heat? Yeah, I would go away. Here's literally the word heat. I will go away from the heat if I increase my temperature. So it's the same arrow. I go away from that heat. So there's another one. Increase temp would give you that idea. Just to show you that it won't be, you know, decrease in temp. Decrease in temp means that it's way too cold, right? And if it's way too cold, you want to go towards the heat. You're way too cold. So then you would shift towards the word heat. And you see how these arrows don't match? So that's why it's not a decrease in temp. Now let's do this volume idea. And remember, pressure and volume are indirectly related. So if you always lower your volume, you increase your pressure. So, but I like to talk about volume in terms of space. Literally, volume is like the size of the container. So if you have less space, it makes sense that you would want less moles in there. You literally just have less space. If you have more space, higher volume, you want to shift to more mole, the more mole size side, right? So now we just have to figure out which side has the more or less moles. Let's calculate, or let's just find out how many moles we got on my reactant side. Remember, that's all coming from the coefficients. So I don't see a coefficient in front of the P4. That means that I have one of them. But then I have six moles of the H2. And I take both of these because they're both gases, right? So I have one plus six. I have a total of seven moles on my reactant side. If I do the same thing on my product side, I just have four moles of my gas, right? So I got four moles. Which side is less? Which side is more? This side is less, right? And this side is more. I want to increase the less mole side. So how am I going to favor the less mole side? Well, shift to the less mole side. I just need less space. I will lower the volume. So that's another way. Lower the volume. And here's one other way. I'll one-up them, right? By lowering the volume, you always increase the pressure. So there is five ways. They wanted four, but I gave you five. But that's it. This may seem a little bit overwhelming at first because we're only a couple of chapters into the Le Chatelier's, a couple of questions in the Le Chatelier principle idea, but hang tight because we're now going to go through it, you know, step by step. So it will kind of be uh, better as the time goes on. But basically, if we understand all of these, that's Le Chatelier's principle. All right. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, guys. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in later lessons. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.